What's going on everyone, Wildcard here bringing you another VGC video. So, as I mentioned in the previous one, this is only the second video for VGC. Um, the country of Trinidad and Tobago recently got sanctioned for um, official Nintendo VGC tournaments. Um, the store that got sanctioned was MV Collectibles, uh, of course. Um, and they had their second challenge on the 24th of August. So I ended up winning this one as well. So that's two in a row, hoping to continue this streak strong. Um, it had more competitors this time. Um, I had to fight through Kyoga, uh, Terrapagos, Mewtwo um, to be able to win this tournament. Uh, so, uh, I'll go through my team here and I'll just recap uh, moments from the tournament. Uh, so, first up we have Incineroar with the Pattern Shot, Flare Blitz, Fake Out, Knock Off, Intimidate, Holding Citrus Berry, Fairy Terra Type, and you can see the EV spread, which you'll notice EV spread of the first three months here are pretty much spread kind of all over the place. So we have 236 in HP, 4 in attack, 44 in defense, 188 in special defense, 36 in speed, with a careful nature. Then next up we have Gaganakal with a ghost terror type, purifying salt ability, holding leftovers, with salt cure, recover, white card and protect. 252 in HP, 60 in defense, and this is supposed to be a careful nature with one... This is supposed to be 196, I believe. Probably skipped on the key, keys there, yeah. This is supposed to be 196 special defense. Yeah, so that was a little bit of a mistake. Um, then we'll move on to our Zamazenta, which and this one is supposed to be careful nature. What is going on? Anyways, um, so this has 228 in, um, EVs in HP, 4 in attack, 44 in defense, 188 in special defense, 44 in speed. Um, obviously item is Rusted Shield, Ability Dauntless Shield. Fighting terror type, body press, iron defense, white guard, um, iron head. So the double white guard actually was pretty useful. Because a lot of people f were looking at the Zamazenta for the white guard and forgot that Garganakal got actually gets it. Next up we have the Fluttermine um, with the Moonblast, Shadow Ball, Protect, Perish Song, um, pulling the Focus Sash with the Fairy Terror type. Standard um, EV spread here, 252 special attack, 252 speed, timid nature, 4 in special defense. Um, then we have Zapdos here, holding the Rocky Helmet with the static ability, looking to get that chip damage off to par and paralyze as well. Um, electric Terra type with Roost, Thunderbolt, Tailwind, Hurricane, 252 special attack, 252 speed, 4 um, special defense. Um, so this would be Timid Nature. Uh, moving on to Ultramart to here, our Leatherwing. Uh, holding the Booster Energy, Steel Terror Type, Close Combat, Morning Sun, U-Turn, Will-O-Wisp. This is a more um, bulky set. So it has 252 in HP, 16 in attack, 72 defense, 168 in speed, with an adamant nature. It still has a very high attack stat. This Pokemon is one that I would have loved to build um, with a first impression, full adamant, 252 attack, 252 speed set. But um, I might, I will not be able to for the next regulation because regulation H. Um, I don't think paradoxes are allowed and legends, well certain legends will be um, limited. So that kind of sucks for that because I only recently started to use this Pokemon and I think it's pretty good offensively. But yeah, so I'll go Pokemon by Pokemon to tell you their usage and what it is I had done as well. 
So, basically, Incineroar is known as one of the best Pokemon for VGC. And I only used this thing twice in the tournament. Reason being that, okay, so how the tournament ran was best of one for the first four rounds, and then top cut. If you made it to top cut, um, it would be that would be the top four, and then it was best of three rounds. So the first two rounds that I played, I played against the rain teams, and I didn't feel comfortable bringing Incineroar into rain teams and then the other two rounds um i played against teams who had either indeedy or furagraph so i was like i didn't feel comfortable bringing it because i was like i can't make use of incinerous priority in fake out so um i wasn't going to bother bring it in hindsight i should have brought it in for the fourth round because it might have made things a little bit easier but we'll get into that uh, um, later so then uh, um, Garganackle, Garganackle came to every single battle this Pokemon with its chip down with the salt cure um, white guard protect recover this did its job and a lot of people forgot about the purifying salt because um, he the opponents tried to thunder wave him, they tried to spore him from a smeargle and forgot the purifying salt, or if they didn't know the, purifi the purifying salt, can't get status, uh, like at all. So that was pretty top notch, yeah, pretty good ability, pretty powerful ability. And we have our Zamazenta here. Zamazenta basically. Um, was brought to every battle as well and pretty good damage here because when it gets its rust with its rusted shield to change its form um, iron hit turns into behemoth bash behemoth bash is a hundred base power move and it it did its job it actually uh, I ended out, out the tournament with Zamazenta winning um, against Mewtwo so yeah with behemoth bash um, so yeah, Plotamine was also a big, big part because of the speed and damage, and I also wouldn't get the other opportunity to use um, this Pokemon again, at least in regulation each. Um, Plotamine is such, it's a glass cannon, but it's such a good Pokemon um, to have. Zapdos, I only think I used this twice for the two rain teams, and I was actually considering um, removing Thunderbolt completely and just having Thunder in the off chance that I went against rain teams. And I thought, eh, I was like, I'm not gonna go against any rain teams, more than likely. Um, went against two to start with, and I kept thinking to myself, should have kept Thunder on this thing instead of Thunderbolt. And Zapdos actually had its stats reduced, it had its special attack reduced twice, and its Thunderbolt still did like, um, about, I want to say about 40-45% uh, Kyogre, but it was in the rain, so that could have been a factor as well, but it still did a lot, but imagine if that was a Thunder, it would have been a two-shot at least. And Ultramot was just, it was just powerful, the will always did have its part to play against, you know, physical attackers, months on to get back health and overall it even at this range with the 16 plus um it two shots Terrapagos with close combat and actually outspeeds Terrapagos at this point. So if I was fully invested in attack and speed, I think this thing one shot Terrapagos with the um Protosynthesis boost as well. And to me, that is insane because uh, this wasn't meant to be so offensive. It's just that uh, Slitherwing's attack stat, base attack 135, is just so good. So in the first rounds that I played, um, I got caught off guard with a uh, with a Archeludon using Steel Beam, and it would have one shot at my Garganackle, but I I thought I was going to get hit with a Water Move, so I just terrored it. And it's, you know, fortunate that I did, otherwise this thing was dead and that, that would have changed the tide of that first battle. Um, my opponent didn't bring any of the 
quote unquote band legendaries that you are allowed to bring in, which I find which was an interesting choice because they ended up reaching a top four. We didn't get to battle again because they ended up losing their match. To the person I end up, end up facing in the finals, but the, the, that's fine. Um, the second match with the rain team was uh, against a Kyoga. It's a good thing I remember Kyoga went for water sport because their strategy was to spore with Smeagol and have Kyoga and well they set up a tail win with, with um, Tony and us first and have Kyoga come in with choice specs water terror water spot and that is a very dangerous combo and Luckily, I remember that, hey, Kyoga gets water spot, I wonder if this is his strategy. So I tried it and it ended up saving me. I actually had to use your type within the rain team, but I ended up tearing this thing more times than not. Um, so that helped me out there. Yeah. In the third match, I believe there was, it was more like, uh, that was with against Terrapagos. Um, Ultramod came in, cl clutched that two close combats, knocked it out while I was wide guarding, and they had a support man with it. So, and they were choice specs as well, so they were locked in to um, its move. I forgot what it, its terror move that hits the the two sides, and couldn't get a hit in on on me with that. And they too forgot that Garganakle got wide guard, so I had the surprise factor going in there. Fourth match, I actually lost after going three. I know I actually lost because Zamazenta got paralyzed um, by a support Regigigas. A Regigigas, I was only there for support, right? And it didn't move two turns in a row, so and ended up getting knocked out within those two, row, uh, two turns. Same with Slitherwing. Slitherwing got the two paralysis off in a row and. Is like I couldn't do anything with him because of that and it, it was upsetting but access hacks that is part of the game you can't really argue that because this is a game we choose to play we know Pokemon is very RNG based and that happens sometimes um, but I ended up moving on to the top four and my opponent was the Terrapagos player and he lost the first round bringing Terrapagos and the second round he did not bring Terrapagos and he actually won that round. So we had to go to a game 3. But I made a mistake, I made a misplay within the within the second rounds um, where I did not prote protect with my Fluttermane. I was supposed to protect with Fluttermane and Salt Cure the um, Smeargle which would have uh, um, allowed me to knock out the Smeagol without putting my Fluttermane to sleep. Um, I didn't do that and the match went so differently. Um, that's why I ended up losing. So in the next match, he started off the exact same setup. Um, so I was like, okay. At this point, he didn't, I didn't reveal Protect on Fluttermane. So I did it and Fluttermane ended up not being put to sleep for the entire match and he had to end up sacking off the the Smeargle as well so that was a big big thing there so none of my Pokemon was uh, got spored for that entire match for, well that entire yeah that entire match and we took the game tree victory easy so one misplay can be very, very much ca catastrophic and can set the tone for the entire match. And then in the finals, I actually faced the person that I lost to. For the two rounds, they actually did not bring the support Reggie Gigas because uh, um, I don't know if they thought that uh, now that I knew it was a support mon, I would just ignore it because it wasn't there to do damage, it was just there for supporting purposes, it was just there to survive. So I guess that's why they didn't bring it, but um, I managed to knock out um, his first two Pokemon. Um, I wouldn't want to say easily, but he took some Whittling down. And at this point in time, um, I had I had my Incineroar. I actually brought Incineroar for, for this one. This was one of the few matches because I brought Incineroar for the, the two final matches. Because why not? And I should have brought him more because 
is a little bulky and people see him as a threat and I could have used him as a distraction to um, initiate my... Uh, to initiate, you know, Samazenta setting up, getting body presses in, um, or flutter me in, just destroying because they didn't know that it had focus sash. So, in hindsight, it would have made the tournament a lot easier for me if I had done that, but it worked out in the end because um, with my Incineroar fainted and I had Fluttermane and Garganakle in the active and he, and my opponent was down to Indeedee and Mewtwo and I knew he had Expanding Force on a Mewtwo so what I did was I, I tried to anticipate for it but he knew I had White Guard so he tried to play around it too but I went straight for the Paris Song and it worked out because it took him about two turns to get rid of Fluttermane because I have Protect and I have Focus Sash on it. And by the time the countdown dropped to one with the Indeedee and, and his Mewtwo, Zamazenta was allowed to come in and the Psychic Terrain disappeared so he could no longer try for Expanding Force. There was, basically there was no way Oh yeah, and the only attacking move his indeed he had was Dazzling Gleam. So all I had to do was White Guard with the Garganacle and just set up behind defense. So I didn't even need to attack with, with Zamazenta and I would win because there's no way he could have knocked out both of them. And also one thing that I think was a misplay on my opponent's part is that he actually used um, Psy Strike on my Zamazenta. And that way I got to gauge the damage that Mewtwo was doing um, from my full health Zamazenta. I know he was probably checking to see how much damage it did um, from full health as well. So it was information on both sides. So that's how I knew that Zamazenta versus Mewtwo, Zamazenta could um, take on Mewtwo. Um, but uh, the Paris Song won me the first round and the second rounds. Um, it came down to Zamazenta versus Mewtwo. I did manage to get damage off on the Mewtwo and um, two Behemoth Bashes later, um, Mewtwo was knocked out. I think I could have... it was a three hit. Both of us were like a three hit. Or actually, I think I was... yeah, both of us were about a three hit KO. I think Behemoth Bash had a chance to three hit KO the Mewtwo and Mewtwo had a chance to three hit KO me because he had Aura Sphere on the Mewtwo but the Aura Sphere even though it was super effective I think it I don't know if it was the damage roll but it did less than Psy Strike which was insane um but yeah so that was that for that tournament it was all in all a good experience um at NV Collectibles, of course. Um, but I'm looking forward to the future tournaments. Uh, if they do remove legendaries and paradoxes, it would open the door. Um, I might actually bring um, a Meow Scarada team alongside Incinero. I like Incinero. I don't think Incinero is crazy broken, like everyone says it is. Um, it's a very good support, but there are ways to out it. Um, but yeah, let me know if you want to see any team building videos or any other different videos um, for um, the Pokemon VGC. Because I'm just trying to be consistent with it and be like, learn more learn more competitively as well and if you guys know something that I don't do that something I may have overlooked be sure to mention it in the comments yeah I just want you all to let me know know your opinions so that we can learn together especially if you're into VGC as well so if you like this video be sure to like comment and subscribe I'll see you guys in the next one goodbye